Watch what crap bins. Watch what crap bins. Who cares what happens when there's so much that crap bins? Hello and welcome to Watch What Crappens, a podcast about all that crap on Bravo that we just love to talk about. I'm Ben Mandelker. Joining me today is the one and only Mr. Ronnie Karam. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? Well, hello, Benuni. How's it going, sweet guy? It's great. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2023. You excited? Oh, what a liberating New Year. You know, I'm old enough that this year I was finally like, I'm not doing shit. And guess what? I'm eating Rice Krispies treats for my first meal, so I can't pull this. I'm on a diet. Uh. <laughs> so I'm, I'm in my 40s, okay? And I, every year it's the same thing. Every year it's thinner and richer. This time I just said richer, able to walk by the end of it. And that's it. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's a pretty good goal. You know, <laughs> lower your standards and your year will be great. That's what I say. Lower those standards. Lower the standards. Well, today we are recapping Real Housewives of Miami. We're going to do a little sort of like a breeze through episode six, and then uh, we'll do a full proper recap of episode seven, catching up as best we can. Because, of course, Peacock dropped a million episodes on us right as we decided to go on vacation. So that was challenging but uh we're catching up so then um later this week we'll have a fresh recap of the newest miami episode we will be officially caught up um before that though just a reminder in case you didn't hear it already tomorrow we are announcing where we'll be going for our 2023 tour it's very very exciting we are so we're just thrilled um, so we'll have that announcement tomorrow and tickets will go on sale shortly thereafter. So, uh, stay tuned, make sure you are following us on Twitter at what crappens and on Instagram at watch what crappens. You can also follow Ronnie at Ronnie Karam, me at Ben Mandelker. I'm sure we'll be plastering all the information everywhere or just come back here to this very own, this podcast. It's going to be everywhere. So we want to make sure that everyone is up to date. So get psyched. We're very excited. And, there will um, be a pre-sale this year, as usual, yeah. and those are for Patreon members. Patreon is where you find our bonus episodes and our Crap and Salt Demand videos, which we do a couple times a week. So go be a member at patreon.com slash watch what crappens. Uh, pre-sale codes will go out, I think, I think Thursday, very soon, and then the others will go on sale after that. And all of this, of course, includes the crappies, the golden crappy awards, which we will be doing this year. We're super excited. We're going to be at a huge space in Los Angeles, so come find out, okay? We'll tell you later. Now, as far as Miami goes, uh, there's a full recap of episode one. Then we did kind of like uh, episodes two through five, like this is basically what happened Today, we're going to do episode six. We're going to talk about what we can from that and then do a full episode seven recap right now. Coming your way. Coming right now down the pipe. Yeah, well, let's just dive into it, shall we? Enough enough dilly-dallying. Let's talk about it. So let's, episode six, by the way, was amazing. I feel like it was the best episode of the season. I was cracking up. It was amazing. This whole season has been excellent. Miami is just in such a groove. I know everyone online is really excited about it. I share that as well. Um, and episode six basically started out with the women still gathering around Lisa. They're in Key West. They Lisa has just broken the news to everyone that Lenny not only that the marriage is over, that he actually has a girlfriend and he's bringing the girlfriend around is not hiding it from Lisa whatsoever. These ladies are screaming. I mean, these are the friends you want when you find out your husband is cheating. Because she's like, guys, Lenny's got somebody and he's with her. And they're like, oh my God, no! <laughs> it's like a telenovela, like a bomb just went off on a telenovela. They're like, oh! <laughs> when Alexia's like, I always knew, is I always knew, flying I always around. Knew. 
<laughs> gold jewelry flying around. There's makeup streaming down faces and rivers. You know, it's like, oh, <laughs> it's so good. Like when you have like, like the, for me, I imagine this on Beverly Hills and I imagine it would be Kyle putting her hand over her mouth. and like, oh, are you sure? Is this for real? Oh my God. And then Lisa be like, oh, no. Oh my god! But these women—they're just like flipping the chairs, like oh. But I always, a flying like, I always cow know I didn't flies like across I the screen. Like it's like Twister. Helen Hunt chases a flying cow across <laughs> the screen. I mean, all sorts of shit is happening. Oh, and it is so good because you know, if you tell your gay friend like, "Oh my god, Lenny cheated, and he's dating someone," you know our response, right? Bitch, I told you he was doing that. <laughs> I told you. You don't ever listen to me, but not these girls. These girls all knew too, but they're like, ah, bon <laughs> <laughs> It is just so good. So then, of course, they go onto the girl's Instagram and they're all like, <laughs> they're like disgusting. They're like, Buddha. Like, oh. Yeah. Like, Lars is like, <laughs> Lars like, she's like ugly, like, she's like ugly, like, she looks like a man. Yeah, she's like a man. And Alexi's like, Instagram, ho! I'll pull her by the hair. I love to pull girls by the hair. And she starts like giving us a visual <laughs> representation of how she would do this. So then they all start giving her advice at one time. And it's pretty much the advice you would think. Like, Lars is like, oh my god, you should like take a selfie right now, like finding out. Because like, that would really get some good engagement, like... <laughs> and then Gertie is like, "Okay, from now on, you're going on to the, you're going on your own freeway. Okay, you're going on the, you're going on the Lisa Gertie freeway. Okay, and Lisa Lane only. Okay, no other cars can be there, bitch, because you have a special easy pass. You have the one because there's cameras overhead, and the cameras that way, Lenny's looking on the camera and he sees you alone on the highway and says, I want to be in that highway, but Lisa Lane only. Okay, Lisa Lane only from now on. <laughs> yeah, you only think of Lisa and the Lisa Lane. And so now <laughs> everybody's looking at Gertie like she's just being a total asshole because everybody else is like." Take everything you can. <laughs> you know, Mary so like, well, make sure you get the gray goose. And Alexi's like, put knives in their bed. Start them on fire. You know? And Adriana's like, you know, they're all just coming up with these crazy things on how to get Lenny back. And Gertie's the only one who's like, you can do this. You're independent. And you need to only worry about yourself. So get it together and fend for yourself, you know? Yeah, and like everybody looks at her. Yeah, everybody looks at her like, what are you, fucking crazy? <laughs> <laughs> well, Larsa is like very upset about this. I, I, I'm gonna just imagine that Gertie was like domineering or something, or like stepped on something that Larsa wants to say. Because Larsa is very upset. She's like, um, I'm the one who's actually like been through a divorce, like, so like I should be able to talk, like, yeah, like she shouldn't talk, cause like. I'm not like gonna go to like a table with Michelle Obama and dictate the conversation. Like I'm gonna be like, what do you want to talk about? Like, cause it's Michelle Obama. Like when they go low, I go on OnlyFans. That's like what I know. <laughs> when they go low, I put my feet really high, cause guys really like the angle of the sun coming through my toes. <laughs> like, uh, I love that Larza is so delusional that she puts herself at a table with Michelle Obama in the first place. <laughs> like, girl, you're you. not, you could have ended the sentence at, I'm not like going to go to a table with Michelle Obama. Like, that's it. She's the not going to be at a table. She's not going to be at a table with Michelle Trachtenberg, less than lo- let alone Michelle Obama. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so then um they all go to their rooms cuz Lisa, you know, Lisa is extremely delusional. You know, now that we know what we know and we've seen episodes and we kind of look back at the gossip, <laughs> even later in the episodes they're like Lisa must have known, right? Like this is not a surprise. Like Lenny is probably Lenny and Lenny claims, of course Lenny's a piece of shit, who's going to believe him? Not me really. But he claims that she already knew this and he's been trying to leave for years or whatever but of course lisa's like i can't believe this is happening when anybody with eyes and ears is like oh this is gonna happen you haven't escaped for a decade like you for a decade we've been saying this (laughs) you have other bank accounts ready with it with shit that you're putting in there right but she's just she doesn't she's like the person who goes on survivor and doesn't know how to make a flame yeah and you're always surprised because there's always people like that on survivor and you think Guys, you know what this show's about. You know what you have to do. You know what you got to do to prepare yourself, to protect yourself, to make sure you can last as long as possible. Why aren't you doing the basic things? 
Yes, and this is that. This is the this is the survival show where you marry a really disgusting, old, gross, melted candle looking man for his money, and you slowly put shit away in the Cayman Islands. Like, <laughs> lady, do you know nobody who watches Lifetime? Come Seriously. On. So then everyone is like now back in their rooms. And of course, it's that it's that moment on the trip where everyone has to call everyone who's at home. Right. So Gertie now calls up her husband. What's his face? Who is so disinterested. And he's just like sitting there just wanting to go watch some Marvel movies because that's like his thing. And she's trying to explain the drama. And she's like, you know, it's like if your house is on fire, you better go make sure your house isn't on fire. Right. That's, do you understand? <laughs> she, she goes, well, first she's yelling at him. She's like, can you believe this? And Lenny did this show. I cannot believe that he would do that in guarding time. This is guarding time right now. And he's like, well, you don't have to yell at me. And she's like, are you doing it? And he's like, no, I'm not doing I can barely muster up the energy to talk to you on FaceTime. You really think I'm putting my dick somewhere else, you know? Yeah. And she's like, well, if your neighbor's house is on fire, you better go make sure your house isn't on fire, too. <laughs> so then they go have dinner and <laughs> they all show up in pretty good spirits, you know, yeah. considering. And the waiter's like, hey, everybody, tonight we've got some poison chicken. And Larcha goes, wait, poison chicken? They're like, no, poison chicken. <laughs> what? Poison chicken. But like you poison the chicken? I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> I just like that in Larsa's head, someone would be so brazen to announce that their chicken is full of poison. <laughs> like, what sort of murderer is that? Wait, what? Well, uh, I thought that, but I think when she said, I thought they poisoned the chicken, I think she means, like, like that's, that's not a nice way to kill a chicken, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, she probably has no idea how they normally kill a chicken, but she's like, oh my God, did they poison the chicken? By the way, I just want to also point out that when you said they were all like, you know, gathering for dinner and everyone seemed to be in a pretty good mood. Of course they were in a good mood. This is the most exciting thing that's happened to them all year long. They have like so much to talk about, so much to gab about. Like, can you believe it with Lenny? It finally happened. Like we always knew this was going to happen. Finally it's out there. Like they all have known, they've known he's been cheating around, sleeping around, etc. They are like thrilled that they can finally talk about this openly. So um, they meet for dinner, right? And <laughs> what everybody wants, is Lisa at this dinner or has she already got, gone home? Um, she shows up to dinner late. Like she, they're waiting for her, but she shows up late. And when she's there, she's like on her phone. Cause she's like everything they're saying. It's like, I can't even hear it right now. I'm so distracted. Cause she's like on her, she's like checking her texts and everything. She's just barely present. So what everybody wants right when they find out they're being dumped and kicked out of their home on a girl's trip. Oh my God. Look at this. I got something. Marisol's like, yeah, I got something for you. It's a message from Todd. And it's this video message from Todd. He's like, hey, kid, it's me. Da, da, da. All right, listen. You know what you are? You're like the sun. You're like the moon. You're like a flower coming out of the ground. Not those fucking gross ones that the air blows on them and that they blow all over the place and get in people's eyes. I hate those fucking flowers. What are those called? Like little fucking cotton balls on the ground. Who fucking needs those? No, you're like a pretty flower. A really pretty flower. And guess what? You're going to get what a, a pretty flower would get for their birthday. Something pretty. But, I mean, they don't got wrists. But you know what I mean. All right, maybe you shouldn't be a flower. You're a zebra. Not those <laughs> shitty little donkey zebras you see on the side of the freeway. It's like, just get through the video, Todd. We get it. <laughs> You're fucking rich, okay? Yeah, it's one of these bullshit things like, honey, I hope you have an amazing time three hours away from me right now for two days. I'm going to miss you terribly. So here is a watch. I'm like, she's not going off to Afghanistan to do a tour of duty for crying out loud. She's three hours away. She's just down the highway. It's like, what happens when she goes to Target? The The only thing that could make this better well, besides you being a zebra flower, it's, <laughs> if you could open this gift right in front of the woman who has just found out she's going to be poor for the rest of her life, all right? If she's hey. not there yet, wait, okay? Just wait. So she opens this. It's this big, big like, what is it, like a snake bracelet watch thing that's worth $25,000, we find out. It's like this really right. nice, expensive thing. By the way, I can't wait to find out Todd's broke. Because I'm not believing a second of his. I'm not believing a second of his gigantic penthouse condo with a five-car garage inside. Okay. Yeah, that's next season. Alexia Alexia does not marry men with no secrets. Okay? Like, that's her thing. (laughs) 
her kink are is secrets that she doesn't know about. But she just it's like she has a kink that she doesn't even realize she has a kink. Okay. She married a drug dealer and a closeted gay man. Todd, I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be explosive what happens with Todd. And and you know it's gonna be explosive because he's doing this over the top lavish gift in the middle of this thing. And again, his gift is like I love you so much. We're starting a great life together. Marriage is wonderful. I love being in love. Isn't love wonderful? Isn't it great having a solid relationship that's going to last forever? At least it's like, you know, it's like, so yeah, the timing is not great. And someone's like, yeah, I think that Lisa's worried that the girlfriend is actually in the house. And Alexi's like, oh, my God, we need to call 911. I'm telling you. Call 911. (laughs) (laughs) That was like my favorite response. Hello, 911. Okay, I have to tell you something. Okay. Uh, Lenny is in the house, and there's a hoe in the house. There's prostitution happening in the house. You have to go right now. You have to go right now. So the producer asked Kiki, like, did you think that Lenny would cheat? Because you've been making some faces every time you hear about Lenny cheating. Because Kiki's faces are priceless. Like, she is not shocked. Kiki knows that this has been going on, right? So she's like, oh, I think so. I think so. Just because the shape of his head, you know? <laughs> you know how the guys have those heads, bald head, cheats a lot. That's it. Look, that guy, the crew guy, bald head, you cheat, no? And he's like, no. And she's like, you cheat. You cheat. She's, active, she's a friend of actively calling out the members of the crew for cheating. She's like, Tom Colicchio? Wow. Big cheat. cheater. Big cheat. cheat. Big cheat. The judge cheat table. <laughs> so then uh, Marisol uh, she wants to have uh, she wants to do a game oh, oh the last fucking time she Marisol game. god forbid <laughs> I've got a game yeah well because last time it was like who do you trust the least mine is Nicole but this time it's like <laughs> alright it's gonna be a fun game that I got at the store and it's gonna be about um, who fits the who fits descriptions or whatever? So let's go around and play it. So like, okay, fine, let's go play this stupid game. I'll let Larza go first because Larza gets picked on the most. <laughs> yeah. So there's picked all just like, on. Are you sure you didn't? Are you sure you didn't mean dripped on? What are you talking about? Larza gets picked on the most. No, like I get like she means like I get like picked a lot for OnlyFans. Like I've like a lot of fans. <laughs> so um, they're just asking questions, you know, like provocative questions and whatever. And so then it gets to um, it gets to what's her face, Julia, and or, or the question for the table is who would make like the best prostitute of the group. I think that's the question. And so then people are like, Julia. And she's like, are you kidding me? I would be worse prostitute because I'd be in sweatpants and be like, I want to stay in. <laughs> and you're like, ha, 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 ha. But then Alexia. I really want to milk goat. What prostitute milk goat? Come on. I want uh, to make pickle. Oh, no. I can see how that could sound good for prostitution. Prostitute can't say only dinner for three. Only for three. <laughs> I will not eat dinner for two. So you're like, oh, okay, fine. And then Alexia, <laughs> Alexia just comes in and is like, oh, well, you know, I thought it'd be you because, like, you know how to be like a prostitute, you know, because you're like Russian, okay? And, like, you know, like you're Russian. Like, so that's like, so you know how to do it. <laughs> and they're like, you can't say that. It's really awkward. Everyone gets really quiet. And she's like, I don't care. I have every right to say whatever I want. So that's it. <laughs> you're, you're a prostitute because you're Russian. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> <laughs> then they try to recover because there's like Alexia is so stubborn. There's no way she's gonna. She's kind of a um, slightly more intelligent Teresa Judice. Like you're not yes. gonna explain to her why she's wrong, and she's just gonna admit it, right? Right. So they're like, oh, you shouldn't say. She's like, I don't care. Freedom of speech. So they're like, <laughs> okay, well, let's just move on to the next question. So who has the lowest standards in this group? And Julie is like, well, apparently Alexia thinks Russians are all prostitutes, so I guess I have the lowest standards. And she's like, <laughs> hey, why are you mad at me? I was giving you a compliment. All Russians are best prostitutes. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you know, Peter not always only, says so. Peter knows all only, about it. And not only complimented to you, I complimented Russia. Like, how yeah. dare you get upset at me? <laughs> I know. I like that she spins that as a compliment somehow. 
<laughs> and then Marisol tries to cover up. She's like, well, Miami is like, you know, it's like a hot cocky in the, in the winter. It's a melting pot of things. And like people, you know, people have to do things to survive. And Russia is one of them. And I think Alexia is just trying to, just, she's just saying a stereotype. How many sort of strange phrases can I say before you start to believe me here, huh? Oh, God. So then... They have this prostitute fight, right? So then Julia, of course, because this was completely fucking offensive. Like, who says that? Commercials. Here comes one right now. So then um, Julia, of course, is also friends with Adriana. And, of course, all night Adriana is in her ear. You know, like, I cannot believe she would say this to you. And so (laughs) now they're having their thing the next day. So they stop at this coffee stand on the side of the road. And Alexi is like, listen, you know, look, I just want to say I'm sorry to you because I did not mean to say Russians are the best prostitutes. I just meant to say everyone can really learn from Russians because they're the best prostitutes. You know, <laughs> it was a compliment. So I'm really sorry because I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. And I don't know if you're a prostitute or not, you know, but I just want to say if you are, you're probably very good at it. It's like some shitty apology, but yeah. she at least tried. For yeah, her, it was tried. something, right? So Julia's like, um, we mean that we become prostitutes and not by choice. And here you are having good time with your champagne and your watch and you made money from your husband and he was drug dealer and she goes you're bringing my past to hurt me how could you do this how could you do this (laughs) and she goes i never live from i never she goes uh well you know oh well you know like i never live from drug money i was a victim of falling in love with a man who was a drug dealer she was a victim of falling in love (laughs) with a man who was a drug dealer (laughs) yeah that had nothing to do with your gigantic mansions and your ferraris and the jewelry dripping off of you bought with drug money alexia come on yeah a victim of falling in love oh god that cupid (laughs) it's funny how it never hits with like fat old ugly poor people isn't it yeah that's <laughs> you're so right how that doesn't happen weird uh so, so she's like don't bring my past to hurt me and julia's like okay guns and roses to you then guns and roses to you <laughs> which i didn't really know I what that meant but i liked it i was like welcome to the jungle maybe or she's <laughs> asking for patience sweet child of my sweet pickle of mine <laughs> Sweet pickle of mine. <laughs> so, so they um, get back in. They get back into the limo now. And I'm, now Alexia oh, is pissed. Dur- by the way, because Alexia the way, during starts this fight, throwing hands during yeah. all of this. So Lexi is like pointing up at the air, like she's shooting <laughs> little guns up in the air and getting her hands in Julia's face and stuff. And they're what they're all they're watching, watching this like from the we bus. are. We would yeah. like that's exactly what we would be doing. Like and Marisol's like, <laughs> uh oh, the hands are moving. This is bad. This is really bad. Yeah, she's a bra. You don't want to mess with Alexia. She's a real bra, Alexia. Got that one? Oh, by the way, I'd like to show off my new cockies flask. That's all glitter, and it says cockies number five. Isn't that holy icon? Icon. <laughs> icon. I'm an icon. <laughs> So they're really, they're just like really going. Because now Alexia is now painting herself like she's the one who's been most offended by this because Julia deigned to bring up the drug dealer thing. So they are just like going at it. And Julia is not backing down whatsoever. Julia is going in. Yeah, because Alexia is like, yeah, what I said, I'm sorry that she's a good prostitute. What do you want? And Julia's like, oh, and I was drinking. And uh, Julia's like, well, your apology doesn't work because you are not drunk now and you are still standing up for your opinion. So, guns and roses, baby. <laughs> yeah. So then they get into, they go back into the, in the sprinter van and it's like really tense. And so Alexia is, Alexia is just trying to like explain. She, well, not really trying to explain, but they're they're still kind of like, it's like tense talking, you know? It's like they're not quite scream not quite yelling yet, but she's like tense talking, you know? Yeah. And so she's Alexia's like, "You know what? Like, you know what? Like I never lived from drug dr-. she's like, uh, "You know what's more, more shameful? You know to me than this is like women who go out with married men. That's more shameful." And I took oh, that one because fr- yes. Yeah, so now yeah. she's trying I, to turn it to Adriana. Right. And I actually initially thought she was trying to pivot it back towards Lisa and like the girl, like Lenny's girlfriend. So I, at first I thought like, oh, OK, she's going to defuse it by just throwing shade at Lenny. But then Adriana's like, oh, you know, because it was about this whole thing with the doctor. Did you think it was about Lenny's girlfriend or did you think it was about Adriana at that moment? 
No, I thought it was about Adriana because Julia and Adriana are a team. So Alexia knows that she's fighting with Julia, but she's also fighting with Adriana. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because Adriana's the one who's saying, oh, really? Because she was with a drug dealer. She was in Cocaine Cowboys on yes, Netflix. Yes, that's right. She got the This up. is all, yeah, what is <laughs> Julia? Netflix. Julia doesn't keep tabs like that, you know? like Right. I, I'm sure she didn't sit through Cocaine Cowboys on Netflix. You know, this is all Adriana in her ear. And then it pisses off Alexia and Marisol, who are both standing up for each other constantly. I mean, they're even doing their diary rooms together yeah. on these episodes. Like, But they get mad when some Somebody else does it, which is pretty right. funny. So it's getting tense, and Julia's like, come on, bring it to me. Come on, is that all you got? Come on, bring it to me, Slash. Come on. So then it comes to... Um, this episode, uh, episode seven. It sort of segues right. it. Episode so seven Larza, picks up the middle of this. So they're on the van, and so Larza tells Gertie, she's like, you know, like... Have you ever, buddy? Have you ever known anybody who's, like, sat at a table with, like, Michelle Obama, like? Gertie's like... <laughs> Uh, one day she's like no but like if you're talking to Michelle Obama you shouldn't be like telling her advice on like divorce because like if people give divorce advice they should like be divorced like and Gordy's like so you're saying I should not be talking about a divorce because I'm still married well thank you very much but nobody's gonna tell me to shut up so how about that and then Alexia's still like oh the most shameful thing is people who sleep with a married man that was the most shameful thing. So this theory, is he single or no? And uh, um, <laughs> poor Adriana's like, um, no, he's single. He told me he was single, so I believe him. She's like, well, I don't think so. I think he's married. And, uh, okay, I'm getting confused because now we're going into the new episode, right? Oh, yeah, because okay. I was confused. I was like, yeah, so that was what was going on in the old episode. Because, by the way, this is all happening all at once. It's like... A million people cross-talking. And so Julia's like, yes. you know what? When your cover is blown, you open your mouth so low, loud, you don't shut up. And Alexia's like, oh, well, you know, Peter, you're trying to put me down, and it's not going to work. And Julia goes, well, I don't shame women like you do. And Alexia goes, no, that's what you do. You're putting me down. That's what you do. <laughs> she goes, well, you're punishing yourself, Alexia, by who you are. And Alexia goes, well, I'm always going to be in the spotlight because I was born a star. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, that had nothing to do with anything. So Lexi is like, you know, you can be a good drug dealer and be a good person too. Just like you could be a Russian prostitute and be a good woman. And Adriana is like, but is prostitution more shameful than drug dealing? And she's like, you know what's more shameful? Yes, this is so now she's going for the married man thing at yes. Adriana. So it's done done. So Adriana's like, yeah, but <laughs> so you were dun-dun. married. Okay, now I'm caught up. I'm caught up. So I, Adri- I, just, I like that just like that brief summation of, so now it's done done. I was like, that captures so much of this show. Well, that's what I write every time there's a commercial or like any kind of break. I say, dun, dun, dun in my notes. <laughs> so then when we come back, Adriana's like, well, you were married with her mom before you were dating Todd Dada. And Lexi's like, liar. And Marisol's like, all right, this is escalated now. All right, this is really gone too far. This fight is stiffer than a khaki and a flask. And Julie's like, you know what? Yes, this is when she does the cover is blown. And then um, Gordy's like, uh, give well, me so, this look. Because yeah, Alexia Gordy's is just like, like okay, I'm caught up. just give me a second. I'm caught up. Okay, I need to get caught up in my brain. Because this is two episodes. The first episode, we didn't have full notes. And this one, we do. So now, buckle your seatbelts. We're entering full notes territory. I know, it's true. It's really hard because, yeah, because we're... It's a very intense conversation, and we have different, like, our notes are sort of out of alignment here. Yeah, but, but now we're back. We're back. I promise we're back. So, Alexia, <laughs> it bears repeating. I'm always going to be in the spotlight because I was born a star. And, Gertie, you don't have to give me that face. And Gertie's like, what face? And she goes, you're like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like Gertie's face always, by the way. Also, when Alexis says, I'm always going to be in the spotlight because I was born a star, you're not allowed to workshop your your housewives lines in the middle of a fight. Like, that's not allowed. <laughs> she's all, like, half turning. And, like, her <laughs> arms like, are on her, on her hips. Yeah, she's rotating. There's, like, a little dog and two kids behind her. So then um, Gertie is mad that Alexia said that about her face. And she's like, I have never been called that, not by my parents, not by my fucking dog, not by my siblings. Oh, look, look at your face. Like, she, like she's about to literally catch my wrath. I am so angry that I am going to sit here quietly and then just tell everyone in the, in, in the confessional about how angry I am. 
So Marisol's like, all right, all right, pay attention, everyone. We're going to have mojitos and roll cigars. And she tells us, I can say I've never felt more trapped in my life. Even all the cockies on the bus weren't helping me soothe this mental masturbation. I, you don't even make any fucking sense. <laughs> I know. Stop what are cutting you to her. About? <laughs> So they all get out at this restaurant, and um, I was very excited for you, Ronnie, because I saw all the centerpieces were planted in Cafe Bustella tins. Did you see that? Oh, yes. I saw a lot of breakfast there. Yeah. So they go up to this bartender, Vadim, and he gives them like a little, he's like, he's like, welcome to Havana Cabana. And he starts like teaching them how to make mojitos. I'm like, this seems fun, but also like they live in Miami. I think they probably know how to do this, et cetera. So... <laughs> Like, I'm just going to put that out there. They, everyone probably knows how to make mojitos. It's also like this really calm restaurant where they're like, let's just sit down and have some lessons about mojitos and cigars. And Kiki comes in like, baila, baila, baila. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at all these cheaters. Everyone, cheater over there. It's like, sorry, that half of our staff is bald. So, uh, so yeah, they're making the mojitos, and Julia tells us, My breaking point is when respect is missing, from calling all the Russian women prostitutes to digging some dirt on Adriana's boyfriend. I'm very annoyed with Alexia. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> it cuts to the guy making a mojito. He's like teaching them, like you put stuff in and then you muddle it, right? And Larsa yeah. just watches him and she goes, You're like the best bartender in the world, like... <laughs> Wow. Is this poison mojito? <laughs> and uh, Marisol's like, you better stay in line, everyone. I stole the muddler. So they're just all drinking. And Adriana tells us, well, we all feel bad for Alexia because she has tragedy after tragedy. But I think on this trip, we're having a revelation about Alexia because maybe she's not so sweet. <laughs> and uh, at the table, Alexia's like, yes, you know, because I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I don't have any girlfriends. Like, I'm a feminist, but I like support women and I understand women. <laughs> what? Didn't she just say I'm not friends with women? Yeah. Didn't she literally say I'm not friends she with says, women? I don't, I don't have girlfriends, but like I'm a feminist and I under I support women and understand women. I'm just not friends with them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like her wires are crossed or something. It's like it's like a it's like when a checkout machine goes crazy and receipts just start flowing out. You're like, what is happening? So oh, Adrian thank God we've got Nicole here because Nicole's <laughs> like Guys, how bad do you think traffic's going to be this week because of the Formula One race? <laughs> well, well done. You just earned your paycheck for the season. I know. And and so Larsa is like, yeah, but like Lisa like texted me today asking if we can go out to a party for like F1. And I said, I'm hosting the event at the Versace Mansion on Thursday. Like, And Marisol's like, oh, well, Lonnie's going to go to F1 with a girl. Probably get a bunch of cockies, if you know what I mean. Wank, wank, wank. And then one day earlier, Lisa is tell Lisa is cry we see go back to the time when Lisa's crying with everyone and she's like, Oh my god, he told me he's gonna go around F one and hang out with her. Oh my god. I'm like Marisol's Marisol is shocked that she's gonna be doing this. It's like that's Lisa's whole point. She wants to ambush Lenny. This is what this is what she's been waiting to do forever. Yes, and good for her. So Marisol's like, yeah, but she wouldn't go. I mean, that's awkward. And Lars is like, yeah, what's awkward? Is it like he like goes out, but then she's at home like crying? Like I feel like she's like, you know, but like she could go someplace else. But you know what's going on this weekend? Formula One. So that's where she's going to go. Why shouldn't Lisa go out and enjoy F1? I'm not going to allow my ex, who has a full-on girlfriend, dictate my future. Not happening. I want that Formula One, and I want it in my forehead. Uh, you know it's not Botox. <laughs> what? <laughs> so Lexi is like, I just don't want her to run into Lenny. And they're like, that's the point, babe. And so then Julia tries to take it back to the fight. She's like, guys, question. Where do we go from here? Hurtful things were said in each direction, and I don't believe we hate each other. And Alexia's like, oh, are we still talking about this? I didn't mean to hurt you. But when everyone starts chiming in, and then like Adriana, and then like things go like that, what do you want me to do? That's it. That's how it went. 
And then Nicole's like, and then everyone reacts like malicious. Like that person chimes in and hurts you. And then that person reacts and then it hurts you. And then it goes low and then it goes low. And then that person reacts and then that person reacts. And then my dad shows up with the turkey and then the turkey reacts. And then I react and then my dad leaves the turkey. And then my mom's like, go get the turkey. And I'm like, why mom? And she's like, now you're reacting. And I'm like, no, you're reacting because now you're on team dad. And she goes, yeah, well, you should be on team dad too. And then I'm reacting. And then Anthony reacts and then the plane reacts. And then my son Grayson reacts. And then guess what? 24 hour shift. So reactions. And well, you know, I wasn't trying to hurt Julia. I was just trying to tell her she's really good at her job at prostitution. And I said, I'm sorry. So what else do you want me to do? And then we get a... <laughs> and uh, Nicole's like, yeah, she's she's got a strong personality. It can come off abrasive. Uh, but, you know, sometimes it can come off as condescending, maybe. And then um, Julia says, but I was vulnerable. I share something private. I miss the girls, and my relationship with Martina is not at the peak. And then you say I'm jealous of you. I'm not jealous of you, period. Unless you have got to make dinner for in city, do you? <laughs> and then Alexia does the classic. Well, oh well, you know, Peter, we're not perfect. A lot of things hurt. My life hasn't been perfect either. She starts doing the oh well, your things. You're going through a tough time. I'm going through a tough time too. Even yeah. though I just celebrated the happiest point of my life, getting married to Todd, and we had a presentation of a watch last night. But no, my life has been terrible too. And then Gertie decides that she's going to fight now. So she goes, no one's life has been perfect. But we need to stop comparing. Because some people get the microphone and some people don't get the microphone. And I'm tired of this shit. I'm tired of this microphone shit. And they're like, and what? I, they I all just like, stop and stare at her. <laughs> I What was funny to me is I thought that her metaphor made sense. She's basically saying some people get to talk and other people don't get to talk. And they're like, huh? And Curtis is like, yes, some people can have a microphone and like everyone's listening. And then some people have like microphones and like no one wants to listen to it. And they're like, so like you're saying that like some people are like bad wedding bands and some people are good wedding bands. I don't understand it. Karaoke is not for everybody. Like, <laughs> um, but I think they were confused. It makes sense. It's just has nothing. To, it's delayed because her, her argument was in the van when Alexia told her to stop making faces. And now <laughs> she's like, oh, really? I don't get a microphone. But it's like an hour later. <laughs> yeah. So they're they like, don't understand what? the context. Yeah. They're like, what they're is like, she why talking is she mad? About? Yeah. Gertie's like, it's okay. Like everyone has their positions and their angles. It's okay. And Marcel's like, well, I'm lost. <laughs> I'm just a wacky old gay icon over here in the corner. Yeah, so Larsie goes, I think we're supposed to listen to Gertie talk. And she goes, yeah, all I'm saying is give each other respect. Is that confusing? And Marisol's like, well, you just keep saying all this other stuff. And Alexia's confused. I mean, is anyone else getting confused? Oh, I'd just like to point out, Alexia is getting confused. Okay, <laughs> also, Alexia looks as confused as water when I reach for it. <laughs> it's like I say every time Alexia walks down an aisle in CVS. Alexia looks confused, everyone. <laughs> so um, she's like, yeah, when Gertie talks, I get confused. Ay, Dios mio, Gertie, I don't understand a thing that's coming out of her mouth. It's like a Rubik's Cube. You twist it, and you twist it, and then you get tricked, and then it's all off. Why do they keep cutting to Mary Saul? I just need. <laughs> she makes me insane. She's the try try hardiest of all the try hards. And this is on a season that Jen Shaw still is not in prison. Okay. <laughs> I've kind of given myself over to Marisol. I've I've I sort won't. of stopped. I've, I've stopped resisting, and I've just decided I will accept her little prop laden asides, you know, the little cocky cup or bedazzled cocky cup. So Gertie goes, "Okay, let me start over." Okay, all right. I didn't like the way she dismissed me when she was talking to Julia. And, she, you know, you said to me, like, why are you looking at me that way? And I'm, like, looking like, what? <laughs> what? what? And Alexi goes, oh, well, you know, like, sometimes you make these faces. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but you make faces. <laughs> <laughs> I just love Alexia's indignant apologies are so rude, but they crack me up every time. Like, you know, because you said she's like, an, like a more intelligent Teresa. And that's so true. And it's like. She even because- does the blink, 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 blink 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 but it's like a deeper <laughs> blink it's not blink 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 it's like blink 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 i don't understand blink 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 blink, blink, blink. Oh, i'm sorry <laughs> blink blink she, she's so can't be bothered to say i'm sorry but she always says it anyway but in this way it's like well i'm sorry but like you know i didn't know i didn't know yeah, i'm and sorry then she's you're like, stupid <laughs> Well, I'm sorry. And so Kiki tells us she's like oh Gertie has so much to say but she doesn't say it so she goes with all these special expressions like bald men after they cheat, they're like, uh, uh, and then, then Kiki does all these faces. 
<laughs> and Gertie really does do that. She does a perfect imitation of her faces. Yeah. And so Marisol's like, and Gertie will say, this cake is delicious, and then go, <laughs> like, what is that face for? Is that delicious cake face? I don't got it. Well, so sue her if she's the only person who hasn't frozen their face yet on this cast. So Gertie That's is That's another like, point. She can still move her face so <laughs> nobody know. understands. You know, they're like, ooh, what kind of creature are you? We forgot what facial expressions are. So Gertie is like, I mean, the, po- the point is it's dismissive. And then later on, you're like, I'm a star and this and that. And like, who the fuck do you think you are to talk to people like that? Like, do you even have a lane on the highway? I don't think so. We're all freaking equal. <laughs> Well, it doesn't rain on anyone else being a star. Just because she's a star doesn't mean that you can't be a star. And Alexia's uh, Alexia's like, oh, yes, let's all come for Alexia. Alexia's the star. Come for Alexia then. You know what? I'm done. I'm going to go smoke my fucking cigar. And so she gets up and she walks away. Commercials. Here comes one right now. So now some of the ladies go over and Adriana is talking to Gertie and she's like, you found your voice and you have to speak your truth and I'm with you. She's over there team building. Yeah, exactly. And Gertie's like, there's a hierarchy in this group and I'm not having this shit. I'm blowing that shit up. Okay. And she tells us, I'm going to restructure this infrastructure and make sure it's not on fire. Because if infrastructure is on fire, then you better check that your infrastructure isn't on fire. Okay. <laughs> How about that? The pyramid that's on fire is going to be made of a, it's going to be made into a rectangular square that's also on fire. And it's going to be a level playing field that won't be on fire. And I'm going to turn up my volume on a radio that is on fire. So guess what? There's fire and I'm not going anywhere. So you have to listen to what I've got to say. <laughs> I was like, uh, you just leveled a pyramid in your example. <laughs> you just like, that's terrible. squashed a landmark. <laughs> terrible. Six wonders of the world. Fight me. <laughs> <laughs> How about no more pyramid? More like pyramid bottom. Pure bot, pure bot. Okay, I'll work on that one. So the, now Alexia is still going off at the cigar class. She's like, I've never disrespected her. On the contrary, I've said a lot of nice things about her. And Marisol's like, cut the tip off. It's like circumcision. <laughs> Gay icon in the house. I believe in life after love. <laughs> and since, well, since they are making cigars, Nicole's like, oh, well, do you guys want to hear like a sort of malicious memory? Like my dad, even though he's like Cuban, like he left when he was like five and like he was not smoking. Like, so he like never grew up smoking cigars. So it's like. He doesn't smoke cigars. That's kind of malicious. Don't you agree, guys? Anyone? Erica, okay. You know what? Just uh, put that on the side. If we have time, I guess we'll slip something in. We need to remind people that Nicole's here. So (laughs) go ahead. Just put that in the side folder. Um, And uh, Adriana's like, oh, if it's too big, it won't work. You have to get the medium size. (laughs) Yeah, four months. Four months wait, cigar. And Mary Soul's like, come on, Alexia, you're Cuban. You came out of the vagina with a cigar in your mouth. Like, Julia came out with a dollar in her mouth. You know, nature, not nurture. Am I right, gays? <laughs> <laughs> so that now, next up, they're going to be going to a shaman. And Alexia's like, forget about the shaman. We need a true witch doctor. So they. Yeah, now she's like, like, we need a full bruja. I know I didn't want to write I didn't want to say it. I, I was like I'm probably gonna say this in Spanish and say the wrong word I'll be like we need a coffee maker Bruja. Bruja. so it's the evening and uh Julia's now it's time to talk with everyone so Julia's leaving a voicemail for Martina and she's like I tried calling you today but I I'm I'm coming home tomorrow so as early as I can wake up I promise we can have fun please call me she gets like a call back that's like uh-uh, this is the goat. Please stop calling me. This is not Martina's number anymore. Uh-uh. Dinner for one. Dinner for one. <laughs> oh, this goat. So um, Lisa is also unavailable. They're trying to call Lisa. And um, Nicole calls her mother. And um, she's like, well, I have to leave tonight because I have a 24-hour shift tomorrow. So unfortunately, I can't give these women the anesthesia that I would give my patient. I hope traffic's not too bad because of Formula One. Like, just cut. Please just cut. So we go to Adriana and Julia. And Adriana's like, well, I hope the shaman can clear our negativity because I'm finding the courage to even date again. (laughs) The courage. Finding the courage to date again. She was dating four people at a time last year. But now she's like, I'm (laughs) I'm finding finding the courage. courage." 
<laughs> just like, but like this guy's also a jerk and this one's a jerk and this one's a jerk. I just don't know if I can do it. And Julia's like, well, don't allow yourself to be bullied by them. They have no right to say something, especially the way they are seeing it. And Adriana's like, these girls already got their man. Like they're married. And like, I wish they would leave me alone so I can get through like my four month rule and finally get some. I'm like, well, or you could just drop the four month rule by now. I mean, come on. It's not working out for you. Yeah, four month rule. We're older. Four months means a lot more now. You know. Yeah. Four I mean, minutes. I feel like I'm the uh, the age of a Real Housewife now. And four months? Are you fucking kidding me? You better have bought me a camel in a you know condo somewhere by then. <laughs> a camel in a condo. Yeah, I don't I like know why it. I said that. It's um, okay. So then, it's a um, yeah, I'm Lebanese. I always think that I'm just going to end up back in Lebanon in the desert somewhere <laughs> with the. <laughs> With the, the Lebanese man. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> as long as there's Wi-Fi so you can st- still do the podcasts, you know? Oh, sorry, I let my dream slip. <laughs> so um, some of the girls are walking over. Adriana and Julie are walking over with Gertie. And we cut to Alexia. And um, she's bitching to Marisol, of course. And she's like, I mean, if I see someone across from me and they're making a face, it isn't because what you're saying, right? Like, I can't sit across from her because I can't say something. And then she's making faces like this. (laughs) Starts making the faces. And Marisol goes, yeah, that happened to me, too. I was like, is she having a seizure or something? I love that Marisol could literally be anyone in the world because nobody listens to her anyway. You know, I know. And Alexia is like, oh, oh, uh, oh, well, you know, Peter and Julia and Adriana, like they're always tag teaming. Or is it is it tag teaming or team tag? They're team tagging. Tag teaming? Tag te- I want her to stay out of it. Okay. I want her to stay out of it. Okay. Because like every time she's talking to Julia, every time I talk to Julia, Adriana jumps in and vice yeah. versa. Yeah. She yeah. says something. I totally agree. And then Hold Gertie's on, like all to... over the place. It's like, it's yeah. so ridiculous. It shouldn't be uh, like that. You know? Hold on. I need to get my leg out of the potato sack unless you want to hop with me right there to the bar. But I'm going to have to you know, I don't even know what's, what's what's happening. It's like it's ridiculous. Everyone like tag teams on me. I don't even have a friend here. I don't even have someone to tag to, to be out like my ally. I have it's just like me alone here. Ow! Why did you poke my forehead? I thought I was turning on the TV. How am I gonna know? <laughs> oh, all right, I'll turn on the TV then. It's disgusting how close these people are to each other. So she's like, um, "We have to pay this bruja. We need money. Do you have cash?" And she's like, no, I don't have... Oh, don't worry, I'll pay for the bruja. She's like, that's why I hang out with you, because you take care... TV off! TV off! <laughs> so then the women are... They're walking to the shaman, and then Lars is like, I feel like I have to do more of what Marisol does. And Kiki goes, what does she do? Not eat. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, no. No, she takes it to the next level. You can't do it like that. And so they're all laughing. And finally, Adri- back with Adriana, Gertie, and uh, Julia walking, Adriana gets a call back from the possibly married man. Yeah. And um, she's like, well, I have not had time to confront him because he lost his mother. So if it's true, I will not touch a married guy. You know, I've had that done to me, and I believe in karma. Yeah. So she's like, so, hey, Thierry. Uh, I have to ask you something kind of crappy. Okay, I'm going to put you on speak. Can you, do you mind being on speaker? There it is. I'm glad I got the crappy part out of the way. Okay, are you married? Is it true? And he's like, "Uh, I've been separated for five years. And she's like, so legally, are you legally separated or divorced? He goes, no, divorced. A hundred percent. Totally divorced. Three years divorced. Don't you worry. Well, some of the girls are saying you're married. And she's like, yeah, I knew it didn't make sense from the beginning. He's not married. So take that, everybody. And (laughs) Julia's like, I feel so much better. I feel so much. She's like, yes, I had a knot in my stomach. I feel so much better. So they go and they think they're winning, you know? Like, (laughs) yes, finally we're going to make these two look stupid. Yeah, because, I mean, one thing that we've learned from the show is always trust a middle-aged doctor in Miami who has a dark marital past it, it always works out yeah um when you even have to ask <laughs> you know what i mean like this far into dating yeah. um tell me the truth are you married or not <laughs> bad sign guys so then they get to the table and they're talking about like oh my god we're eating so much we've gained so much weight and adriana's like oh well i think i gained five pounds and did i tell you i'm doing a video for my new song 
I got a yacht for it. Is anyone down to do it? And then she tells us, I don't know. People don't know, but I've been singing for 10 years now. You may remember my song that goes, Come join us for the sale of the century at Miami Mattress. Yeah, singing a lot of songs. <laughs> yeah, my first hit was, Ha, ha, Miami. Ha, ha, Miami. Ha, ha, Miami. It's like, wow, are, have you gone on tour? <laughs> oh, wait, hold on. I just got... They just sent me a. They just sent me the latest uh, version of uh, the demo of my new song. It goes like, it, it, here. Listen, it goes. It goes like this: shoes, shoes, shoes for sale at Payless Miami. <laughs> oh, so good! Gonna be a banger. So she says that "Feel the Rush," the theme song to this show we're watching, mm-hmm. was so successful that she decided to make more. And my new song is in homage to hot bodies in Miami, and also it's about Miami having hot bodies. <laughs> yeah, the new song is called Fire, um, and it's because it's it's about all the hot bodies and why Miami is so fire, at which point you know hot Gertie's people. like, oh, so your single's on fire, see? Okay, Russell, I'm calling you. Hey, guess what, Russell, you didn't see if your house is on fire? Guess what, her music's on fire now. Congratulations, you didn't do your job. Every time she sings the chorus, Gertie calls home, are you cheating on me? <laughs> So then cocktails arrive, and Maris is like, oh, yes, cockies. And then Julia's like, I would like a martini with no vermouth and muddled cucumber inside. And Maris was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> it's like salad. So um, Alexi is like, oh, my God, I feel like we're all single. And there's this like, Adriana's not single. Adriana, you have a boyfriend, right? Like, she's like, oh, yeah. And I asked him, you need to tell me you are married or not. And he said, divorce three years and it's public records so I can show them. Oh, did you see the public records? <laughs> Alexia, right? Because Alexia came with receipts. Okay. Yeah, she's ready. She is, yeah, she has looked for these. And she's like, no, but you have it. And so Alexia whips out her phone already <laughs> up to the page. Yeah, it is, the screenshot is available. And she's like, oh, well, you know, Peter, I'm believing the public record that I have a picture of. And I'm believing that the man is still married. And so, like, she's always made it a concern about how she has how he she has trust issues and how these men all do horrible things for her. And like, my concern is for her. And those are always my intentions. But she doesn't listen. I'm, like, I'm sorry. She doesn't listen. She's stupid. I'm sorry. Sorry. Eesh. And she Adriana goes. But when was this done? I'm like, they're so late with public records. <laughs> it's three years later, and maybe they just didn't get to update. It's actually them a yet. very yeah. feasible like explanation. I mean, bureaucracy, city city bureaucracy is bad. So then Marisol goes, TBD to be determined. Thanks, Marisol. Thanks for explaining your acronym. <laughs> <laughs> so Gertie is telling us, oh my God, bring out public records in front of everybody. That's fucked up, you know? And Alexi is like, you know who I believe? Miami Date. Dot gov. That's who I believe. <laughs> Mommy did dot gov. <laughs> and Marisol goes, oh, yeah. Um, uh, she's like, uh, she's a master Googler. Okay. She's a master Googler. And Alexi goes, oh, no. I call Johnny. Johnny's my Google. <laughs> oh, so I call you. You call Johnny. Johnny calls Google. Like, see, I knew this fucking started with Mary Saul. Yep. Exactly. It LOL. always does. LOL. LOL. That's laugh out loud. <laughs> um, so Alexia just goes, I am not the Google kind, which I thought was very funny. That's a certain kind of person who will look something up. <laughs> yeah. I also just like the idea of someone in 2022, like ha- brazenly saying they're happy to stay away from search engines. So <laughs> then <laughs> I hate to learn things. This is I the know. thing I hate the most. <laughs> I Disgusting. don't like to inquire. So Lisa, we haven't mentioned this, but Lisa actually left. Uh, last episode because she's like I gotta go back my kids are in the house I gotta save the kids from Rebecca de Mornay so she goes back and so she's calling in and um, and Lex is like oh well you know Lisa we, we brought you to the phone with our thoughts and she goes it's not good over here it's really not good so they're asking all these questions like are you back in the house did he lock you out she's like no I'm back but um, I think that he's brought the girl here. Yeah, Lisa. He said he was going to bring the girl there. He said. <laughs> I know. Like, I thought- <laughs> she, 
<laughs> Why was she even staying? She should have been, you know, God, I shouldn't say she should have. Like, that's a horrible situation to be in. But, like, you hear your your husband just says he's leaving and he's going to be dating the girlfriend flagrantly right in front of you. And you stay on a vacation? I mean, I know it's a job because she's filming, right? But, girl, run home. Well, I mean, she did. She did run home. And then she's like, I found some evidence of things. Looks like they were in the movie theater and they had two bottles of wine. I can tell because they're actually both in the movie theater with two bottles of wine right now. Oh, my God. I was like, that's not evidence of any. That's evidence that your cleaning lady is slacking off because she thinks she's got the day off or something. (laughs) But the DVD they pulled was Sixth Wives Club. Oh, God. So Mary Stahl's like, I never liked him. And Lisa said, everybody's told her the same thing. She goes, they ordered from the restaurant enough food for two people. (laughs) There were two sets of footprints going from the foyer to the front door. I think two people were here. With my kids in the house, I didn't even look at him. And they're they're saying, is he there? And she says, he's out with the family. Well, yeah, no, she, no, Lenny is out with the girl right now. So Lexi goes, no, oh. no. She, Lenny goes, you know what? He's lost his mind. He's pussy whipped. Lost his mind. Midlife crisis. Everything. Everything is happening to this man right now. Everything. All of the above. And Lisa goes, yeah. They're, they're for sure fucking, right? They're fucking, right? Everyone's like, uh... They're fucking, yeah. And Alexi goes, they're fucking! They're fucking, yes. They're fucking. I'm sorry, you know? Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, they're fucking. What do I do? Do you think... Wait, do you think they fucked in the house? Yes, they fucked in the house. Wait, do you think they're fucking tonight? Yes, they're gonna fuck tonight. Oh, my God. So, uh, also, I just want to point out the way Alexia phrases is that he's pussy whipped. He's midlife crisis. It's everything happening to him right now. She will always find a way to kind of excuse the man. I agree. Always. I noticed that, too. That it's like Every single time. She does it with, with the drug dealer husband. She didn't know he's still a good person. Peter. You know, she does it with Peter constantly, you know? And then even now, Lenny, it's like your friend just got screwed over. And she's like, oh, well, he can't help it. You know, he's yeah, pussy not, whipped and he's in a midlife crisis. Literally nothing is happening to him. He is doing things to other people. I noticed yeah. that, too. And I was like, oh, God, this 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 lady is programmed. Yeah, she's ridiculous. So then they're like, yes, they're fucking. And Marisol goes, oh, my God, what does she think they're doing? Playing tiddlywinks? Hold on. Get this cocky in a shot. This is a new one. Just finish this one. <laughs> Glue just dried on this one. Got it. <laughs> So then, um, I like Julia. Everyone's <laughs> no, everyone's obviously outraged, justifiably so. And then Julia's like, "No, I would do. I'll pack his stuff, cut his sleeves off his shirts, and throw it out in the pool." And then Lars goes, "No, because then then she looks like a psychopath." Like I'm like, um, well, it is Lisa. But then Marisol, I liked Marisol's idea. She's like, "You know what you need to do? Start posting videos of you at home with your children because everyone's going to see him out with the other girl and realize that he's a piece of shit. I was like, now that's how you do it. Oh, that's a PR person answer, right? That's what I, yeah, that's exactly right. It was total like, this is a reminder that Marisol did work in PR. Yes, it's like, oh, just start suddenly posting pictures of you in button down shirts with collars. With yeah. the sleeves rolled up and like a wooden spoon in your hand, stirring something in a pot, like holding one baby on your hip and having the other <laughs> tugging at your jeans. That's exactly right. That's it. Yeah. Uh, but that is actually what you should do. So then Adriana's uh, advice is a little bit more direct. She's like, okay, change the locks. And if he gets aggressive with you, call 911. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They just want to call 911 all the time. Yeah. So um, Larza tells us when she was going through her divorce, I did what I had to do to like keep my family together like wasn't larsa the one who divorced scotty i thought so i don't know why larsa wasn't was like, her thing that she always wanted to be out like they never saw each other but then once he was done with sports they still never saw each other because she wanted to be other play i don't know i i feel like I, it was her choice to get divorced I don't remember. I thought so. I thought the whole thing was that she wanted to. Yeah, wasn't it? It wasn't that she she had lived all those years in Scotty's shadow, and she wanted to be her own person. Yeah, and he, and he was like not signing. Right, he was holding out. I thought that was all. Of yes, that and he didn't want to get divorced. And wasn't it that she wanted to go to L.A. or something, and he didn't want to? He wanted to just have their life together, and she was like, "No, it's my time to shine." Yeah, I just thought this depiction of herself as this. <laughs> 
dutiful mom just trying to keep everyone together with only fans was a little curious <laughs> well it's larsa so what are you gonna do so she's like you know what i'm gonna say like i love you like michelle obama and i'm gonna like call you from the room so that when you like talk to michelle obama you're not saying stupid things like okay <laughs> i thought there was i thought you were saying i forgot that that like was just a larsa like and not a <laughs> stu- you're not saying stupid things like it's such punctu- as no it's just punctuation for larsa yeah she's like my advice is like prepare for worst but then hope for like not the worst because like not the worst could be like worst but it could also be like better than worst but also like like okay call you soon i'm gonna like say like a little prayer for you like when i get back to my room and then when i get back to miami i'm gonna like pray some more in my apartment that's not in a place with lots of hookers and pimps okay thank you good luck and then alexia again goes okay bye bye then uh mina now is the time where they're both vulnerable because so is he are you fucking kidding me with that who says that? Who says that? I don't Man, think Alexia, like, the tides turned really quick against Alexia. Yeah, I don't think that he's vulnerable at all. Like, the only he's thing he's vulnerable. vulnerable to is his hair plugs falling out. So then there's just, like, silence. And then Julia goes, shove it up his ass. And yeah, and they like, all laughs. laugh and cheers. And then Alexia's like, this is the perfect moment to go see the shaman. So they go over to the shaman and um, this guy... <laughs> This guy. It's like a Fred Armisen and Kenny G. <laughs> this guy is a trip. And he, uh, Adriana goes, are you the man I'm looking for? And he goes, the one you've been looking for your whole life. <laughs> and Adriana's like, well, I'll tell you something. I hate men. Men, those motherfuckers. So his name is Fernando. And they're, they're like, the weirdest thing is that they all gather around. I don't remember if it was like a fire pit, but they're, they're in like chairs outside. But they're basically at a bar. It's like an outdoor bar or like the hotel. And they're all doing this shaman uh, exercise like feet away from where Sue and her best friend are having margaritas. <laughs> like it's so bizarre how close they are to everyone else at the so resort. So he's like, what a shaman does is they're able to see in the dark. Oh my God, nightlight, nightlight. Todd said, I said, no nightlight. We got nightlight. I see in the dark. Shaman, bruja, <laughs> bruja aquí. Yeah. So he's like, you know, we quiet the thinking mind that's always preoccupied with what we need to do and where to go. And we allow that part of the brain to soften, to quiet. I was like, I think a lot of the thinking has been softened on this cast already. I would not worry about that too much. Do not miss these brains anymore, okay? They can form sentences. We need them. And so Lars is like, the shaman like gives me like baby Jesus vibes, like... I'm expecting this guy to, like, walk on water and skip his hotel bill. Like, <laughs> he's, like, gliding in front of me, like. Yeah. And Alexa's like, well, even if he doesn't know what he's talking about, like, he's going to be a good bullshitter because us Cubans are really good bullshitters. Like, and he's going to tell you some tremendous story and you're going to believe it. I was like, okay, so your credibility is now, <laughs> I guess, not so great. <laughs> Cubans bullshit like Russians prostitute. There. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry I said it. Sorry you can't take it. So he's like, okay, give your attention, your full attention, and allow your friend to offer what they need to offer to the fire, because then you'll have your turn to offer things to the fire. And then the most shocking thing happens. They all just start crying and having honest moments. It's not like some crazy housewife show that's like, your husband's going to leave you, and I know when you're going to die with Mm. your children. You know, it's not one of those Allison moments. Right. It was sort of weird, though, that Fernando didn't give them new extensions, because I thought that's what shamans do also. Maybe that's just like, that's (laughs) just what I remember from Dallas. I'm surprised he didn't click up. I'm I'm surprised he didn't like um, pick up like really big spills easily, like a (laughs) ShamWow. That's what ShamWows do. I'm surprised he didn't just like jump over a wall and swim out to the ocean. That's what shamans do. I'm surprised he wasn't covered in chocolate because that's what almonds do. (laughs) (laughs) Stupid. (laughs) (laughs) Cut. Cut. All right, take that out of post. All right. I'm not even. even, Hey, Ronnie, make one of the little videos about this moment right now. (laughs) Even though we're not on video, just like find some animation. 
<laughs> um, Cancelled. Put that in the Mary Soul pile, please. Thank hey, you. I thought he was. I thought he was going to make a movie score because isn't that what Mark Shaman does? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh a very specific a pop culture reference. So everybody just gives log lines of their plot lines this season and cry cries over that, you know. Um, like Larza says, uh, I mean, Alexia's like, I mean, where am I? She says, um, I want to be more open and more accepting of my son Peter and his decisions. Oh God, yes. Yeah, so you start with them. Julie is just like, oh, I talked to my wife because I will not eat dinner for two. And um, yeah, Alexia is like, oh, I need to understand Peter more. Oh, my God, you need to fucking call the cops on your son. Yeah, awesome. the one person that she's Lock not calling away. 911 on. <laughs> yeah, what a piece of shit that guy is. Yeah, Kiki is like bawling because she's just scared to start over and she's all by herself and scared. I guess maybe she just went through a divorce. I forget. And then Larsa is like, I feel like I had like such a good marriage like in the beginning. And I'm just looking for that. And I'm not going to like settle like unless I feel like it like that. But it's impossible to find because it was it was so good like. Yeah. And he's like, but are you wi- open and willing to love yourself first? And she's like, yeah, like, I like my own posts. He's like, wow, good for you. And so Gertie's like, I let go of this little bird. And it comes to my room and it pecks. And it's not my bedroom, it's my office. And then people are like, somebody is pecking on your office. And I'm like, leave me alone. Get out of here. Give me the microphone. And then I take the microphone from the bird. And I sing, I've been to paradise, but I've never been to me. <laughs> And then my and then my Alexa goes off. So then, <laughs> <laughs> what is she even triggered by? It's so weird because I that, never was, say her name. There was she just was like, "Hi, I'd like to talk to you about your Gertie impersonation." <laughs> she keeps coming on and saying the most rat. She's like, "I've never heard of that." Oh, really? Well, <laughs> thanks for the snotty attitude. So Marisol cries be, uh, about her, you know, losing her parents, and she just wants to help. She, I just want to help my friends be better. Like, you know, she's a saint. And then Adriana is like, well, as a little girl, I used to wake up to the crying of my mother, and my dad used to cheat on me, my mother all the time, and my mother weeps herself back to sleep. The people at the bar next to her are probably like, what is going on over in that corner? So, yeah. um, but it's a very nice emotional moment, and they sort of come out. Alexia tells us that. You know, that they need to be more tolerant of each other and more patient, and not judge as much. And because we all have a little black sack that we put things in and then put more things in there and it accumulates and they get a lot of baggage because a lot of stuff in their little black, black, black sack. So, yeah. So they all leave hugging and crying, you know. So now we go back to, hey, hey, Miami. Hey, Miami. Hey, hey. And Julia's sweeping out the barn. God, you silly goat. Dinner for three tonight, goat. Goat's like, I'm not eating with you, prostitute. Hey, <laughs> this is what happens. <laughs> and Nicole does math with her kid. And you can tell this is Anthony's kid. Because she's like, okay, if I give you one dollar and then I give you another dollar, how many dollars do you have? And he pulls out a fiver. She's like, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Hey. It's like, wait, I'm missing a five from my purse. Wait a minute. <laughs> so if you add 23 hours to one hour, how long does that make your shift? 24 hours, mom. I get it. You say it to me every day. <laughs> so then we go to Ariana's music video. And uh, they're they're doing rehearsal with the choreographer and stuff. But it's just her and Kiki, pretty much. And Adriana's like, yeah, Alexia takes it that she has a hectic morning. So I don't know where Alexia is. And Kiki's like, but then tomorrow they're going to fuck your whole thing. And then comes in Jonathan, the director. He's like, sweetie, sweetie, where the girls, sweetie? Where All are right. they? Okay, everyone, I just got off my shift at Jamba Juice five minutes early so I could be here right now. Tell mm. us, okay, places, everyone, places. No, this is not a Jamba Juice guy. This is maybe like a Cinnabon, bowling alley, Cinnabon. <laughs> manager, um, the, the manager at the Cinnabon bowling alley. But maybe he goes to Jamba Juice. <laughs> he goes to Jamba Juice to get his drink and he yells at the girls there like that guy in the viral video last year. And then he goes to Cinnabon where he's the manager. Yeah, or I could imagine him like managing a corn on the stick a hot dog on a stick you know no you no, it's corn on a stick he's like well you heard of hot dog on a stick well let me tell you something corn on a stick come on in i'll give you a free sample <laughs> the cobs are longer and the shorts are shorter <laughs> elote on a stick 
<laughs> We'd love to hear your reviews on Yelp because the corn has ears. Okay, everyone. <laughs> Free samples. Sweetie! And Adriana was like, well, we're disappointed, but we're carrying on because the girls have hectic mornings. And so then we see Alexia driving <laughs> up to Neverland Restaurant. Yeah, this never Which is does. funny as the mother of the biggest Peter Pan on Bravo right now. <laughs> so she yeah. drives up and she gets a table for three. And Marisol, Larsa, and her have lunch and completely ditch the video. Yeah, their hectic morning. <laughs> Marisol's like, why the hell do I have to be in rehearsal? I'm not going to be dancing. I'm going to be serving cocktails like the gay icon I am. Come on, Vogue. Yeah, let your body move to the cockies. You can do it, Icon. Lars is like, first of all, like, I'm not like shooting a music video if it's not my own, like. Um, so Let's you can that. barely Let's get through a way. halo. You can barely get through a halo collar segment. Okay. <laughs> we won't hold our breath. I can see your halo, halo, halo collar. So and now we go wrap. back. And now we go back to Adriana and she's like, well, I'm going to record it and I hope they can learn it because I'm not getting married to a man. I'm getting married to my dream. <laughs> Sing a song called Fire about hot people in Miami. <laughs> so the director is Kiki, pissed. Kiki goes, it's okay if you can eat chips in a video, right? <laughs> <laughs> so he goes, is she kidding? The director is so mad. He's, he's doing a full director thing. He's just like, because Adriana's like, well, I'm just going to like show up like, you know, like, if, you know what? If they don't, if they show up, and they don't know the choreography. Because, well, that's even more half-assed. Okay. I told every, I told Joni at Cinnabon that I was making a big deal feature. And this is what's going to happen. What am I going to tell Joni? <laughs> so back to the restaurant. Alexia's like, I can have a frosé, please. And Larza goes, I don't even know what frosé is. It's like rosé, but it's like frozen. Like a rose freeze. Frosé. No. Yes, it's called a frosé. I don't get it. <laughs> okay, just move on, guys. So they're you like, froze so a you what? What did you freeze? <clears throat> frosé. Froze a what? Frosé. That's, that's it. Frosé. Froze. Oh, I'm not playing this game with you. <laughs> so I went out with Lisa and we like went to this like gala like, but then I like saw like Lenny enter with like a girl and like I almost had like a heart attack. <laughs> like, oh, so you saw him with a girl? How did Lisa react? She goes, he got ugly. And then um, we then we see Lisa, our first Lisa sighting of the episode, and she goes and she meets up with Lenny's mom for for lunch. And Marina's like, Oh, Lisa, I'm extremely sorry. I don't really know how to change my son, little asshole. I don't know what to do for you right now. Yeah, it's actually really nice because Marina is on Lisa's side, which I didn't really see coming. Did not see um, that coming. Yeah, so I really like that. And she said, nobody in her family divorced. This is first divorce in her family. So is and she really on Lisa's side now or is she on family reputation side? Well, I think both, because, I mean, listen, they no one's been divorced, and he just had children with her, and he's leaving her alone. You know, she always hated Lisa before, but I think she figured, listen, this is your wife. She had kids for you, which seemed to up Lisa's reputation with the mom, but I think it's kind of a mixture of both. Was this Lenny's know? first, is Lisa Lenny's first wife? I guess. Wow. Yeah, because she said no one in their family's ever been divorced. Wow. So, they were together a long time. I mean, did she say 16? Is it 11 years or 16 years? 13. I think it's 13 years. Well, I guess neither married 13 neither years, but maybe together. That's how my brain works. Well, either way, Lisa's like, I have spent my entire adult life with Lenny, and I, I don't even know how to date. Like, he's dating. He has a girlfriend. And Marina's like, oh, he's changed so much. I cannot recognize that man. And she goes, oh, I said, please stop. Stop embarrassing us. And he said, don't worry. No one's going to know anything. Oh, my God. Yeah. So um, she says that she bumped into him at Formula One. Just bumped into him. Just yeah. had, had no idea he'd be there. And he was holding her hand. And I said, stop this. And then I told the girl, why are you a homewrecker? And then she licked her lips at me. She licked her lips like this. Really? That's no, when... it's disgusting. Stop it. It's disgusting. 
Yeah, and um, the mom's like, oh, and some of these people were watching and probably taking pictures and videos of this. What kind of woman is she? Peh. <laughs> Yeah, and then Lisa goes, well, Lenny's not a great person himself. They're both at fault. Marina's like, uh, okay, I'll let that one slide. That's my son's too. <laughs> I'll give you that one on temporary basis as long as you don't try to make me shakshuka again. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Or borscht. It was borscht, right? Borscht. No, that, but Lisa make. was having shakshuka. I think that was like Lisa's first shakshuka. She's like, I'll have the, what do you call it? Shakshuka. Yeah, the shakshuka. I'm like, how do you live in Miami for 13 years and never get shakshuka before? So then back to Larsa, she's like, I'm like having like a heart attack. And I like text Lisa, like, like, where are you, Lisa? Like, and she texts back and she was like, the bathroom, like, like, I guess she like ran into them and like recorded them, like holding hands, like. Marisol goes, no. <laughs> yeah. And he left and she left crying. And then now Lisa's like, she's, I mean, Lisa is going through it, understandably. And she's saying, like, how much can her heart take? She's going to be a single mom. She's scared. And she says that she's been living in denial. And, you know, after the first affair 12 years ago, she should have suspected it. And uh, she just talks about crying herself to sleep and waking up and still being in a nightmare. Yeah. So then um, uh, Larza is like, yeah, but, like, you want to know, like, how crazy the girlfriend is? Like, she posted the watch that Lenny gave her on, like, Instagram. Like, it's like a $100,000 watch. And Alexi's like, Lisa has that. Well, at least he didn't take Lisa's. And they all just kind of look at each other like, did he? Did he take yeah. Lisa's and just give it to this girl? Because I wouldn't put it past him. Mm-hmm. And so then Marisol's like, well, Lisa was advertising her lifestyle. We knew that would come. And Alex, now they start to suspect that Lenny's been telling Lisa for a long time, like, hey, I'm done. I'm done. I want to be out. I want to be out. And that Lisa just brushed it off all these years. Yeah. Alexa says, do you think Lenny told her like it's been over four months and like you need to get over it? And that's why he's acting like this. So, yeah, they're basically saying Lenny broke up with her. And that she just was going into Delusionville, where she's just trying to make it work, trying to make it work. And then finally he's like, I told you, get the fuck out of my house. Fine, then I'm going to go public with this chick mm -hmm. and have her post her watch and stuff. Right. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I think there may be some truth to that. Like, I, I just, just because Lisa seems to have been in such denial, I would not be surprised. But even if he did do that, it still, I don't think, justifies the way he's behaving now at all in any way. So... Then well, and the fact that she hasn't even called a lawyer, like she's doing all of this, like I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna show up at f or I'm gonna show up at Formula One and really get it on Instagram yeah. or whatever. Like, where where I have you called a lawyer, girl? Like, how ironclad is that prenup? So then Larsa's like, "Can I like tell you guys something? Like, I got like tea, like." And Marcel goes, "Oh, what other bomb are you dropping today, Pips?" I was like, "Pips, what is this? What are we like?" What God, we've got what? tiddly winks and pips in one episode. <laughs> I know. What 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 strange spin-off of Greece are we doing here? I know, like we're once to judge. We're like, let's compare this to the television show Sisters. <laughs> <laughs> so Which one of these ladies is most like Flo from Mel's Diner? <laughs> so then Larsha goes, So like an old friend of mine today saw they saw said they saw Julia making out with a guy at the surf club. Swear to God. Swear to God. <laughs> Has to be continued. Dun, dun, dun. Well, we'll have to wait to find out how that works out. And a lot of people, by the way, have uh, messaged us about Martina, which, of course, we have read about and heard about, which is very oh, sad. But we so hope that sad. But Martina the prognosis is good. breast and throat cancer, which is stage crazy. One. She found out she had both. But, yeah, they're in stage one. So, you know, it's looking good for sure. But bless her heart. Love her. And the Martina good way. Is a, the Martina, good way. Is, Martina is Martina. This will not take her down. She will be fine. So anyway, but all our our best, you know, wishes and good energy and vibes go out to Martina for this. And of course, to Julia, too, and the whole family. So anyway, on that note, thank you all for listening. Thanks all for being here. We'll be back to recap the new episode of Miami. Finally back in sync with the show later this week. And we will catch you all on the next episode. Bye, everyone. 
Bye! Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Alison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Dana C. Dana Do. Aaron McNicholas, she don't miss no trickolus. Hava Nagila Weber. Jamie, she has no less namey. Sipped some scotch with Jessica Trotch. Kristen the Piston Anderson. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. You're never alone with Lacey Monteleone. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. There ain't no problem that Sarah Salvia can't solve ya. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors, the incredible edible Matthew sisters. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. Always the wiser is Allison Weasler. She's not harsh, she's Jill Hirsch. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Erica, 500 days of summers. She's the queen bee, it's Sarah Lemke. Undo your fasteners, it's Aaron Kastner. We love him madly, it's Kyle Pod Chadley. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. My favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. Give him hell, Miss Noel. Can't have a meal without the Emily sides. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. We want to hang with Liz Lang. Shannon out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys.